What's up? What's up, One Crack News? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's get into it. Um, a lot of you have asked questions. Where have you been about United? Yes, I've, I followed Manchester United. Um, I didn't see this game uh, with Newcastle. I went back and watched the highlights, and I said, oh, my God. Let me watch this game. So I went in, decided to watch the game, and oh my God, it's the game from the start. The fans, the fans are defeated. The fans are absolutely defeated. I've never seen in my days, my life of rooting for the Manchester United, I've never seen them look so basic. And the fans look that bad old trafford has never seen a loss like this never saw a performance like that well maybe you know i maybe it's something that before my time i've never seen them look this bad you know losing the city the way they did you know it was it's t it's obvious players are not happy and with Eric Ten Hag in, in, in position of power, the thing is, getting rid of him is going to be hard. They've given him too much power. The team's in a terrible position right now. This is humiliating. You haven't scored in two games? And I can't. It's just unbelievable. In four days, they've lost six to nothing. Eddie Howe has made like eight changes to the team, but here's the problem: when and you know, um, this guy has made all these changes, and you're looking at. Tim Hag's position, right? There's been everybody is chanting that he would be fired in the morning. Well, he's not going to be fired. It's hard to fire a guy you've given all this power to. Um, the problem is you have people playing out of position. You got Raphael Varn, who's won World Cups and Premier League championships, and then you got Johnny Evans over him. You know, it's like. That don't make sense. And you see where Ronaldo and Sancho, they had their problem um, with uh, Ten Hag and the way he likes to do things and his logical process. This is what's going to defeat the team. And you're going to have a lot of players disgruntled and they don't want to play hard. I wouldn't want to play hard for a coach that I didn't like. You know, it's... It's bad, you know, and saying we just got to pull it together. He's made changes. He's brought people over, but it doesn't, he, it seems like he don't have a plan on how to get it to work. And that's the problem I'm seeing here. And the players are not happy with the changes and his substitutions. And I, I'm so pissed off with the direction of this team. Uh, I never thought in a million years I would see the fans boo the Manchester United and just walk out before the game's even over and done. Just give up on the team and walk out. I, I've never seen anything like that. I'm baffled. You know, this erratic performances from a from a basically a narcissist of a manager for a team. You know, it's this has been a disastrous two years. The team has quit on him. And I can see it. Um, I'm watching this. I don't like the jerseys. I don't I hate these new jerseys. It all started with that.
Now, they don't have an identity. Um, when they got rid of Ferguson, uh, we knew that they, they there's been like eight managers since Scott's retirement that they've had, apart from that. Um, fans, like, you know, I just, me, I'm a play guy. You know, I, I judge people by the way they play. And if you're not playing up to par, then, you know, it is what it is. See, here's the problem. Um, they brought in, what's his name, Mason Mount. And I don't think he scored a goal since they brought him in from Chelsea. I don't think they brought that. That guy haven't even scored a goal. You just can't get the stability that Ferguson had brought in. And since then, everybody's come and gone. So when you had somebody that brought stability to the team, and you get rid of them and you start seeing the revolving door. Well, here we are. Now they're saying, oh, we got injuries. Uh, Barn, uh, Raphael was injured. So he was injured for the game. So that's why he didn't play or whatever. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. A lot of these guys are laying down and want out. Oh, they had a bunch of injuries, a bunch of guys laying down. Then they gave Greenwood, uh, that was being loaned over to Spain, you know, for whatever, you know. And you got Anthony. Right? And you know what happened with his situation. So, I'm just trying to say um, his big fallout really was with Ronaldo and now it's with Jaden Sancho. So, now you got Sancho is saying the same thing Ronaldo said and you know, Ronaldo's Ronaldo. <laughs> you know, so he gets to do what he wants. He gets to go. He can be like, I'm out. Now, when you don't keep Ronaldo happy, and you go at it with Jaden Sancho, they don't want out. Now, the Glazer family took it over in 2005, right? The team is going to be up, I think last November, the owners were considering selling the team and the club and ongoing frustration from the fans and all this stuff, right? The Glazers are out and all this stuff and these British billionaires came in and around with this Sheik, this Qatar and all these other people. They want to merge as the front runners to buy out the Manchester United. So now these billion dollar players want to come in there and save the team. So now the Glazers are going to sell the team and just get out of the business. That's why the fans held up a sign saying, love United, hate the Glazers. And the players aren't bothered about who's buying the team and all that. So don't blame that as a distraction. This is the manager and the players. This is where the problem is. And it lies. Right, Martinez is out with foot aggravation. What the hell is foot aggravation? <laughs> My foot is aggravated, so I'm, I'm, I'm not playing. 
Guys are laying down on this coach. Oh my God. I mean, his arrogance is knows no bounds. And if we don't get better play at the forward position, at hell, every position, even goalie, but I can't really blame the goalie when everybody's giving him nothing. I'm not saying Mason Mount, uh, Anthony, and Rasmus are terrible. You know, they just amassed 11 goal contributions, so like, what, seven goals, four assists, and 51 appearances in the club in all the competitions. That's $265 million down the drain. Uh, $218 million in transfer fees. You know, and all that from the transfer portal and all this stuff. So they spent, what, $19 million, almost $20 million for every goal or assist from the attacking trio to this date. Now, these guys are scores for the fans who are listening right now, don't understand what's going on. These are scores. This is their job. They go out and score and get goals. That's why they were signed and brought over. And it has not amassed to anything. And that has to fall on the manager. At some point, that falls on the manager. That's one thing about soccer that's different. Your lineups, your substitutions is key. It is king. Those who know how to master and know how to substitute win league, Premier League championships. Of course, your stars are going to be the stars, but it's always the ancillary plays that bring home that championship. So you can get a whole mix of great players, but if you mismanage them, you don't know how to sub them in and out of games at the right time, you're not going to win. So he's lost the locker room. And I don't know if Ten Hag could get it back, but what lies at the crux of all this is that the players don't seem to want him. You know, um, I don't want him back. I think we they need to make a big change here. Uh, which, if there's going to be a change of ownership, it needs to happen, and they need to start, you know, moving forward in that direction you know but as of right now you know i'm done i want to say thank y'all don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the page my cash app is carcino k-a-r-c-e-n-o and thank you for watching one crack news and don't forget to tune in to the patreon which is Carcino for Life 1.